Greetings. Now, as you can see, we're not at the offices of EDA Law today. Uh, right now, we happen to be at the local Elks Lodge in Redlands, California. So, right now, we're going to have ourselves a little conversation about pretext calls. Now, before we talk about pretext calls, I want to say thank you for the feedback you've been giving us on the video. So long as you like them, we're going to keep doing them. Uh, as for those of you who seem to still enjoy trying to say that lawyers are liars, too, uh, well, wait, I can't really talk to you because we've banned you. Because we're done with you, absolutely. Uh, as we said, we're not here to be cheerleaders for the cops, uh, and we're not here to pick them apart. We're here to merely go ahead in these sets of videos and tell you about some of the tactics that are being used and how you can handle them. So let's talk about a pretext call. What is a pretext call? Well, a pretext call is a call usually arranged by law enforcement, though it could be another investigating agency, that's designed to go ahead and get you, the person on the other end of the phone, to talk about the allegations regarding a crime. Now, the way they do it is they usually take the person who's the alleged victim. This is very much done in cases of sexual assault or other kind of sexual crimes. And what you're going to do with that, what they're going to do with that is the alleged victim will call you up, or they'll have somebody else who will call you up, and they will start to go ahead and talk to you. And at some point, they'll bring everything back to the issues that were the basis of the, allocation, of the, excuse me, the allegations. And sometimes you get questions like, geez, wh why'd you have sex with me when you know I said no? Or there'll be things along the lines of, oh, God, I was really hurt by that night. Or, you, you really made me feel bad and used. Or, along the lines of, you were so cold to me. Anything along those lines. Now, they'll usually do these calls at times when, will either be consistent with when the two of you would usually talk, early in the morning, or they'll do it later on. You need to remember, if you've been accused of a crime by somebody, that is the last person you want to talk to about anything. This is what the setup is. Now, you may also be thinking, isn't it illegal for someone to record you? Well. In the state of California, it is a two-party consent state. Both people have to say yes to agree to you being recorded. This is important. There is an exception, however. That exception is PC, Penal Code, Section 633, which allows the recording with the permission of only one person, the person who's doing the recording, if it is being done in an attempt to gather evidence of a felony. And that's what a variety of sex crimes and other crimes are, too. This could include if someone is calling you regarding an alleged conspiracy or any other kind of matter. So you need to remember, people can hurt you when they're calling you. There's a very good chance that they're not the only ones on the line. The police are on the line, too. In fact, sometimes police officers will even go ahead, call you up, say that they're a friend of the alleged victim or the alleged co-defendant or the, uh, anything like those lines, uh, and then go ahead and put them on to set up the phone call and record it. Now, which, of course, is a blatant lie. Now, again, folks, this gets us back to the same point. If the police are allowed to do it, we're not hating on them because they're doing it. It's a tool that's given to them. You know, after all, if you were allowed to use steroids in the NFL, everybody would be using steroids in the NFL, or almost everybody. If you're allowed to go ahead and, let's say, in NASCAR, uh, I don't know anything about NASCAR, really. I just circles. That's all I know. Um, but cheating or breaking the rules is something that apparently has been encouraged for a long time. If you're allowed to do it, to make modifications, uh, then you're going to make the modifications that will make your car faster, speedier, lighter, whatever it takes. So let's talk about what else happens with the pretext call. You will then often get an interview from the police. They will want to speak to you. Now, of course, you'll remember the rules. When the police want to talk to you, you should say no. And if you're saying yes, you're an idiot. Okay. So the police come to talk to you, and they'll already say, well, you might as well tell us everything because you already know you spoke to her or him, whatever the case may be, and we already know you've admitted to everything. Now, you have to remember, sometimes your statements aren't admission at all, or at least if you didn't do it, they shouldn't be admissions, and if you did do it, well, they also shouldn't be admissions because, again, why are you talking to this person? Shut up. Again, these are the kind of things you need to remember. So keep in mind, whenever there is somebody who has any kind of information or any kind of position in which they are hostile to you, and they are calling you up to talk to you, they're probably not the only person on the phone. So, with that, we want to say thank you. Once again, we'll catch you at another time. And also, a toast to Burt Reynolds. He was the man. Eastbound and down, loaded up and trucking. We don't do what they say can't be done. Got a long way to go, short time to get there. I'm eastbound, just watch your bandit run. <laughs>